can you talk a little bit about how sort of hunger and, and food and nutritional needs change um, from infancy to adulthood and, and, you know, sort of general ways that cut across all mammals, you know, obviously the milk has a certain nutritional composition. It's presumably tuned to the baby's needs early in life. Then those are going to shift over time. But what are some of the ways, the major ways and in, in most or all mammals that sort of the food needs and the hunger needs of, of an individual change from infancy, infancy onward? Yeah, it's a fantastic question. There's so much to unpack there. So uh, many things come to my mind. Maybe, maybe we break down in peace and you can reflect on what I say. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Since we are talking about different animals, different mammals and examples of that, I, I will continue giving these examples because I think this one is mind-blowing too. So marsupials, some marsupials, uh, so mammals that will have a pouch and the, 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 the embryo we will actually attach to the nipple within the pouch mm. and then we grow within the pouch. Uh, some marsupials will have multiple layers of nipples. So, for example, we'll have the, the vagina will have three chambers. So the first embryo climbs from the chamber and attached to the first layer of nipples. And then once it grows, it climbs to the second layer of nipples, and then the 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 the, the embryo from the other chamber will come to the the first layer. So they are synchronized in the climbing the layers, and each layer will have a different milk, which will be important for the growth and nutrition and the immune system, immune protection of hmm. the growing infant uh, uh, as it grows in the external hmm. pouch of the. The marsupial mother. So, so if I'm Can hearing you right, so, so in marsupials, the embryo is developing and it's always in the pouch, but there's literally different sections of the pouch and, and the embryo is kind of climbing to the, each section as it grows. And as it grows, but while it's still, you know, in the, in the pouch, in the womb, I guess, um, it's attaching to different nipples and the composition of the milk in each nipple is actually different. Exactly. Wow. So I give that example to illustrate this remarkable features. It's the same mother different nipples, each nipple with a different milk composition. So what we do know is that milk composition changes throughout lactation uh, in animals and primates and humans, hmm. and that matches the nutritional and also the other needs. For example, milk will have many antibodies that will be important for immune protection of the infant early on. For example, IgA, this a mucosal antibody will be very high early on, and then we will start hmm. fade uh, uh, as uh, lactation goes on, as also the infants start produce their own levels of antibody. So there are all these features that are matching the physiology of the infant. So if so, that's talking about that. <laughs> so um, maybe you, yeah, maybe you, yeah. So so basically, you, you, I mean. Obviously, obviously, the nutritional needs of a baby are different than an adult. But what you're saying is like even within, even within the preterm period, even within early infancy, the infancy, the nutritional needs are changing. So the composition of milk, you know, from when a, a baby is born on day one, will be different. You know, just a few weeks or months later, um, and, and that's all tuned to the the baby's needs.